and it will take you to download the app for free and you can join for free. So today's flow is a mandala flow based around the core. Now mandala basically means 360 movements so we're going to be circling around our mat in a fun and creative way. And just before we start I want to talk a little bit about the core. So the core does not just mean to pull your belly button in towards your spine. The core isn't just our rectus abdominis muscle, this muscle at the front. It's kind of everything in our torso, so taking away the legs, the arms and the head. So when you're thinking about using your core, you want to think of it like a unit. Lift the pelvic floor, draw the hip bones towards each other like magnets, draw the lower belly up and in and draw the ribs in. And you do this all on an exhale because our diaphragm is part of our core. Now, one other thing to note is that you don't want to be gripping the core like I just explained the whole time. You don't want rigidity. Basically, we want our core to anticipate our movements. So I'm going to give you an example, and you may have heard me say this before. Say it's the first time you've ever gone from downward facing dog, stepping your foot forward. And as you step your foot forward, you think, draw the lower belly and lift the pelvic floor, give yourself space to bring the foot forward and maybe come up into a high lunge. If you've done this um, move hundreds of times before and your body knows what you're doing, you're not going to think about it. Your core is just going to automatically turn on when you do the movement. So when you need that extra demand, maybe you need to put your brain in the muscles a little bit more, but don't hold rigid. Let your belly expand as you breathe. So without further ado, we're going to start to move. The only thing you might need in this class today is some blocks. You're going to come down onto your back and we're going to start in bridge pose to light up the glutes because the glutes are incredibly important to bring us stability and strength in the body. So hands, um, feet are hands distance from the body. As you exhale, lift up into bridge, draw the ribs in. So this isn't a back bending bridge. This is a strong bridge, line of energy, knees all the way through to shoulders. Glutes are firing. You can give them a little poke. Now you're going to reach your arms above your head, take hold of your right fingers and pull back in space. We're on the hands a little bit today. So let's give the wrists a little bit of TLC. And before we start to move, just a note that this next seven days are challenging and you need to get that balance before, between difficulty and challenging yourself, but not so challenging that you risk injuring yourself. So if something doesn't feel right, modify for your body. If there's pain, modify. You know your body best. Take hold of the left fingers now, pull them back in space. Just put your brain for a second back in your glutes, check they're still firing. Bring your focus to your feet, push down through the four corners of the feet and lift the arches. Maybe even pull them back in space, have that sensation they're not actually moving and feel your hamstrings at the back of the thighs say hello. Release the fingers. You're going to stay up, but you're going to do little wags of your knees. So a little side to side action of your knees, about an inch or so. It's not a big movement, but you should feel this glute medius, this stabilizing muscle on the side of your hip start to say hello. As you do this, let's test the brain, make a fist, make a star, and then go between these two as you, oh, this is one of those I always say, starts okay, and then about 10 seconds later, you're like, oh, I can feel it in my forearms. Okay, pulsing for three, for two, ah, and one. Come down piece by piece, maybe give the knees a little waggle from side to side. So the next movement, you can do the whole thing with your feet grounded. You can lift your knees off the mat if you want to. Remember, your body, your practice. Bring your hands behind your head, basket your head in your hands. Remember that concept of the core working as a team. As you inhale, your elbows are going to come in. As you exhale, you're going to lift up and you're going to hold the exhale as you lift up. So draw up through the head. You're not pulling in your skull. Push your skull back into your hand. Push down through the sacrum and even gaze at this pelvis area and just visualize that strength from inside. Visualize that fire. Inhale, slowly release. Now we add on. Exhale, lift. Right leg's going to extend only about 70 degrees. Remember, your foot can be on the floor. And then you're going to take a little twist over towards the left. It's only about an inch or so. Keep lifting off the left shoulder blades. Keep drawing the elbows in. Inhale, brings you back. Release. Exhale, lift. 
Left leg extends, energize through the leg as you twist over towards the right. Lift off that right shoulder blade, draw everything in, ribs draw in for three, two, and one. Inhale back to center, release. We add on, exhale lift, right leg extends, twist. Reach the right arm away from you. You can even push your arm a little bit into your leg, giving yourself a little bit of resistance and you'll feel even more demand on the core for three, two, and one. Inhale back to center, release. I hate talking through these, I find it so hard. Okay, let's do this team. Exhale lift, left leg, twist over towards the right, left arm extends, reach away as you push the hand into the leg. Hold and breathe for three, two, and one. Inhale, brings you back, release. We're doing it one more time, listen carefully. Exhale, lift, right leg extends, twist as you did before. Reach as you did before, but this time reach the arm up towards the corner of the ceiling. So reach, reach, reach for three, lift the tailbone, collect the core for two and one. Inhale, brings you back, release. You feeling it? I'm definitely feeling the fire. <laughs> Exhale, lift, left leg extends, twist towards your right. Reach the arm as you reach the fingers away, then lift them up towards the ceiling. Lift the tailbone and feel that unity in the core for three, two, and one. Inhale, release. Stretch your arms and your legs in opposite directions. Just give those abdominals a bit of a stretch. And then from here, maybe even without using your hands, you're gonna roll over onto your tummy. I'm just gonna move my microphone, otherwise I'm gonna be really loud. One second. Okay, so you're on your belly, and we're gonna do a bit of a handstand practice, but on our bellies. So reach your arms out in front of you, and you can flex your, your hands if that feels okay. So it's like you're doing a handstand, but you're perpendicular to how you'd expect you to, yourself to be. You can come down onto your forehead or you can have your chin facing forwards. Let's start with the, with the hands going towards the feet. So first of all, push the hands away from you. So you're pulling your shoulders up towards your ears. Now draw your ribs in towards your back body so it's like you could, someone could put a hand underneath your belly. Squeeze your bum and squeeze your inner thighs in towards each other. Feel the whole of your body engage. Push the hands away. Draw the ribs in, squeeze the bottom, squeeze the inner thighs, point the toes. Four, five, four, three, two, oh, full permission to fully clap. <laughs> and then you're gonna bring your hands underneath your shoulders and you're gonna make your way into downward facing dog. So in your downward facing dog, pedal the feet, swing the hips, do what you need to do. And then when you're ready, you're gonna find stillness. So hands are shoulder distance apart, feet are hip distance apart. Spread the fingers. Dial the hands out in opposite directions, like you're screwing jam jar lids away from each other. Feel the broadening of the shoulders across your back. Draw the ribs in towards your back body, just like we were doing. Lift your sit bones up towards the ceiling as you reach your heels down, but be okay if they don't touch. Shine the backs of your thighs towards the back of the room. Feel super strong. Now bend your knees, gaze forward. Take a little hop or a step to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. One little sun A. Well, sun salutation mix up before we start our mandala. Inhale, reach the arms forwards and up, ribs draw in. Exhale, hinge forward, keep that nice neutral spine as your hands float to the earth. Bend the knees as much as you need. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale, step the left foot back, come onto the left knee, untuck the toes. Push down through the top of the foot as you lift the arms. Now that left glute is on, breathe length through that left knee all the way up through the fingers. Exhale, cactus the arms, and let's take a few rotations. So breathe in, exhale, bring the um, right elbow behind you, left elbow in front, but you're not moving your hips, you're just moving from your thoracic, your upper spine. Inhale, brings you back to center. Exhale, take it to the other side. Inhale, through center. Exhale, take it over. Last time, inhale, center. Exhale, twist. And then inhale, back to center. Reach your right arm up. 
or it can come onto your onto your um, thigh. Now you can grab a blanket or something for underneath this knee if this is a bit too intense, but just pull this foot back in towards you. If you want to, you can wiggle this foot forward and take a little bit of a deeper low lunge if that feels good. It will change the stretch a bit, a bit so it's more intense on the quadricep and the front of the thigh. Hold for three, two, and one. Let the foot come down, actually, sorry, hold it back up again. Don't let the foot come down. See if you can hold it there using your strength. For three, feel your hamstring, two, <laughs> and one. Us yogis don't have really ham strong hamstrings much, ugh, a lot of the time. Mixing my words. Left hand come down by right foot, tuck the back toes, lifting up into a twist. Try not to let this left hip collapse. Breathe in. Breathe out as your right hand comes down and inhale as your left arm lifts up. Perfect example of how your core automatically does a little bit more without you thinking about it. Exhale, hand comes down, step back, plank. Drop the knees, let's drop the forearms. Inhale, um, come through, slink through onto the belly as you lift up Cobra. And then exhale, take the hips back through child's pose and then lift it up, downward facing dog. Hold and breathe. If you feel like you want some more dynamic movement, you can tiptoe the feet forward, bend through the knees, and take five little bunny hops. Leaning into the hands, imagine there's a balloon tied to your butt, and it's going up towards the ceiling. So instead of thinking jumping the hips forward, you're thinking of jumping upwards. Take one more of those little hops. And then inhale your left leg high to the sky, left foot step forward, come onto the right knee. Inhale, the arms rise, lift up, breathe up. Exhale, left elbow comes behind you as you twist. Inhale, keep the cactus arms through center. Exhale, take the twist the other way. Try not to open the hips. One more time each side, inhale center, exhale twist. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, brings you back, left hand can come onto thigh, and you're gonna take hold of that right foot. Again, maybe wiggling that left foot forward. Don't worry if your heel is nowhere close to you. Some people have really tight hip flexors, really tight quads, and that's okay. This, I, this, um, this practice of yoga is all about connection and tuning into our bodies and exploring our bodies and noticing where we may need to pay more attention and where we may need to ease off a little bit. So gently release, keep the foot there for three, feel that hamstring for two and one. Foot comes down, right hand comes down, lift up, reach the left fingers. Breathe in, breathe out, left hand comes down, right hand lifts, and then right hand comes down, step the right foot to meet your left and fold. Inhale, root to rise, coming all the way up, fingers touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach the arms forwards and up. We start the mandala. Exhale, hands behind head. I've brought my feet hip distance apart just for a little bit more um, balance and stability. Ground down through your feet. You can even lift your toes and then bring them onto the earth, really feeling those big toe mounts pushing down. As you exhale, gentle bend in the knees as you take a forward fold, but stop it halfway. Reach the crown of your head over towards over away from you, towards the front of the mat, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, find halfway lift, exhale, plant the hands, step back, plank. Lower, keep the shoulders lifted, pull back with the hands. Inhale, heart opens, exhale, navel to spine, lift you up. Remember, vinyasa is completely optional, you can always drop the knees. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Drop the knees and find your tabletop. So wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips. We're just gonna test the balance, your balance at first. So first of all, reach your right leg back and lift it using your glute. So what I don't want you to do is to tip your pelvis to lift that leg. See how my lower back over arches. Instead, my glute does the work. Point the toe or flex that foot. Now, added challenge if you want it, can you reach your right arm straight in front of you? Now my left hand is grounding down and dialing out. If you fall, do not worry, this is hard. Try not to completely open the hips, see how much you can square it down. 
One more breath. And now we are going to open the, we're going to open that hip and we're going to come into a modified side plank. So balance is tricky. You can kickstand this bottom leg. You're going to reach your right arm over, reach your left toe away from you. Hold it here. You can keep the toe grounded if that feels better. Lift through the side waist, ground down through that left hand. Now, as you exhale, your right foot steps to the front of the mat. We're going towards a high lunge. So your right foot comes forward. Can you do it using your core and doing it with control, with intention? Bring your fingertips to frame that front foot, tuck the back toes. Now, instead of going into a regular high lunge, engage through the legs, feel your core as you lift your arms into that cactus position, just like before. Hold and breathe. In a thigh squeeze, draw a line from that left heel all the way up through to your crown of, to the crown of your head. Feel that line of energy. Hold, three, two, and one. We're taking this into a warrior three. So slowly bend your weight forward or hinge your weight forward over that right leg, seeing if you can keep this cactus arm. This left hip will wanna open, roll it down, square it with the right. Ground through your feet, again, pushing through the big toe mount. Feel your core, how it naturally wants to engage in this position and stay with your breath. Notice what your head is doing. Is it coming down in space? Can you push it back? Now we're going into dolphin pose. I'll walk you through it. So bring the left toes down with strength and stability. Hands come down, step the right foot back, take a breath in. Option to drop the forearms from here, dolphin pose option to drop the knees and then come down onto the forearms and lift up dolphin your body your practice everyone lift the right leg high to the sky your arms can be parallel or you can interlace the fingers push into the earth draw the front ribs in either hold the knee the leg up straight or bring the right knee towards the right tricep and hold push through the ground draw up lift up for three two and one, we come back into regular dolphin. From here, we're gonna challenge ourselves again with this transition, coming into half moon. If you struggle with the lift from dolphin to down dog, you can bring your knees down and then push yourself up to downward facing dog. If you want the challenge, lift your right leg high to the sky, step the right foot forward as you push into the hands. Then everyone step the right foot forward and start to peel the left side body open as you lift that left leg high to the sky, Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. Again, push down through the big toe mound, lift through the side waist. Hold and breathe for three, two. We're going towards the back of the mat now. How slow and soft can you make the transition? Your left toe comes down. You're gonna spiral all the way to the back of the mat coming onto the back toes and lifting back up into one of those twists. Left fingers high to the sky, facing the back of the mat. Breathe in, breathe out, left hand comes down, step back plank. Option to drop the knees or keep the knees lifted as you lower down. Inhale, lift up cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now, some little spinal waves here. If you need to catch your breath, you come into child's pose and you breathe there. Inhale, spiral the spine forward or articulate the spine forward piece by piece. Exhale, bend the knees, hip side to the sky. Inhale, bring it forward. Exhale, bend the knees, send the hips up. Last time, inhale, bring it forward. Exhale, send the hips up. Now we're going into crow pose. I've got other options here if you don't wanna do crow. So this is a fun transition, give it a go. Inhale, right leg high to the sky. Step the right foot just behind the right hand. So your knee is towards your tricep. Your left foot then lifts up, left knee to tricep, keep the foot lifted, and then see if you can bring your right foot up. If you don't wanna do crow pose, you're gonna step forward, either into a yogi squat and you can take a moment to catch your breath or if you want a little bit more have your toes pointing forward and lift up into more of a toe stand so instead of just chilling out you're going to lift your hips and reach your arms forward so my glutes are working i'm lifting away from the sky so 
everyone, we're going onto our belly. So if you're in crow pose, maybe you take a jump back and <laughs> inhale up, up dog, and then come back onto your belly. I meant to go down to the floor. Everyone else, step back and come down onto your belly. Reach your arms back in space, interlace the fingers. Inhale, lift up, locust pose. Breathe the heart, breathe the legs up for three, two, and one. Slowly release, bring yourself back to downward facing dog. We're going back to half moon. So when you're ready, your right leg's can lift high to the sky. We're still on the right side. Right foot steps forward towards the center of your mat, but maybe a little bit further forward. And then peel the body up, half moon. You can even hover the fingers off the mat if you want a little bit more of a balanced challenge. I'm just gonna turn around so you can face me, but you stay the same side as you are already are. Now we're going in towards side angle. So slowly bend the knee, come through warrior two, bring your arms up towards the sky, take hold of either elbow, breathe in, breathe out and take a side angle, but your arms are here. If this is too much, too much demand, then you can bring your forearm onto your thigh and reach your left hand across. Hold and breathe. Three, two and one. Inhale brings you up, turn the toes 45 degrees and sit down goddess pose. Close your eyes, take a moment, take a breath. Three, two, and one. Spiral your hands to the front of the mat. So your right hand is gonna come down, your left toes are pointing forward. Reach the left fingers up towards the sky. Exhale, hand comes down, step back plank. Coming through chaturanga, all knees, chest, chin, shoulders stay lifted. Inhale, up dog, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Spread the knees, sit the hips down. And take a moment in child's pose. And as you're in your child's pose, just take a moment to really tune in with the body. Have you lost your breath? Can you come back to it now? How did that feel? Notice any resonance of that sequence on your right hand side. Notice any imbalance and look forward to evening out your sides. One more breath here. And then when you're ready, you're gonna make your way into downward facing dog. And we're gonna do the left side. So inhale, shift forward plank, drop the knees, maybe walk the wrists back so you're in tabletop. Left leg extends back, use the glute to lift that leg. Be mindful of that lower back overarching. Either you stay here or you test your balance by reaching your right arm, left arm sorry, forward. So reaching the same side. Hold and breathe. <laughs> Don't worry about the wobbles, I'm wobbling myself. And then next, inhale, open your body out to the side, lifting up into that modified side plank. The hand dials out and you're thinking about suctioning this right shoulder blade onto your back ribs, lifting the waist away from the sky. Now we're about to lift into that high lunge hinge. So slowly, mindfully step that left foot forward, tuck the back toes and lift up into your high lunge hinge. Hold and breathe, inner thighs hug in, line of energy, head through to heel. Slowly shift the weight forward, glue on on that back leg, on that right leg to help you lift the leg. Point the toe or flex the foot, just send energy through the leg as you push down through your left big toe. Hold and breathe. And we're going into dolphin. So toes come down, hands come down. Either you step into down dog, drop onto the knees, drop onto the forearms, or you lift that left leg high to the sky, you drop onto the forearms, or maybe something you do something in between. So again, you either hold your dolphin, arms clasped, arms parallel, lifting the leg, or holding the knee towards your tricep, pushing through the forearms. For three, for two, and one. Now we're coming into half moon. Your left foot steps forward. If you need to come into down dog first, that's okay. Or challenge yourself by pushing into your hands as you step the foot forward. P 
peel the right hip open, right shoulder open as you lift the side waist away from the floor. Hold and breathe. We're going to walk to the back of the mat in a second for our twist. How softly, intentionally can you drop the right foot, spiral round to the back of the mat, left hand meets, right hand lifts. Big breath in. Exhale, hand comes down, step back plank. Take a vinyasa or go straight to downward facing dog. Wherever you are, take a huge breath in. And exhale, let it out through the mouth. Now we come to our spinal wave. So inhale, shimmy the spine forward, push through the hands, round through the back. Exhale, bend the knees, send the sit bones up towards the sky. Inhale, bring it forward. Exhale, send the sit bones towards the sky. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, hip bones towards the sky. And then next inhale, your left leg lift. Left foot steps slightly behind the left hand. Your knee comes towards your tricep. Now remember, you can take the squat or the toe stand, or you can lift that right leg high, bring it in towards the tricep, and practice this little transition into crow pose. It's a little bit asymmetrical, so it's a little bit tricky, but have a go. So wherever you are, we're all gonna make our way onto our belly. So maybe you jump back from crow, maybe everyone steps back. You're gonna come down to lie on your mat, just like before. Bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Inhale, lift up locust pose. And then exhale onto your belly, hands underneath shoulders. Tuck the toes, lift back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Left foot steps forward back to your half moon. Just practicing these different transitions. We tend to always come into half moon from warrior two. So how does it feel when you come into it in other ways? Now, we're gonna go into that side angle now. So slowly bring the foot down. <laughs> With more control than me, reach the arms up, take hold of opposite elbow. Breathe in. Breathe out and hinge over that front thigh. Reach the elbows away from you. Remember, you can always bring a forearm to your thigh. Keep the neck nice and neutral and breathe. Three, two, one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sit back, goddess pose. Sit the hips down low. Be mindful if the knees collapse in. Push them away from you. Be mindful that the lower back isn't overarching and keep that neutral spine. Close your eyes and come back to your breath. And slowly, mindfully straighten the leg. Spiral the arms round, hand comes by right foot. Lift up into your twist. Breathe in, breathe out, hand comes down. Step back plank, lower knees, chest, chin all the way down to the earth. Inhale, pause you back cobra. Or up dog, exhale, hips to the sky. Huge breath in, exhale through the mouth, let it go. Now there's loads, tons of different options now. If you're like, I need a little bit of a rest, then you go for that. If you feel like you wanna do some handstand practice, then let's do that too. So you can come back to those bunny hops at the beginning, you can do L-shaped tops if you prefer that, where you have one leg lifted and you work at finding that balancing point. Or I'm gonna lead you into a strength handstand drill at the wall. So you're gonna come, I'll try and do it this way and see if I can just put one foot on the wall. So you're gonna come up about a leg's distance from the wall. So your hands are gonna be about where your feet are. Now, what people tend to do particularly if they have the fear, is to bring your hands a little bit too far forward. So your hips, your, <coughs> if you think about your torso, I'll just show you actually. <clears throat> your, your torso, your hips are further back when really you wanna try and get your hips over your hands. So just be mindful of that. Don't practice somewhere like I'm practicing now. Make sure you have lots of space around you to fall and never do anything where you, where you're gonna fear of hurting yourself. 
So take the right modification that's right for you. So, as I said, you're gonna come about a leg's distance from the body. You're gonna walk up the wall. Hopefully you have more wall than I do. And you're gonna slowly bring your hips so you're making that L-shaped position. So your hips are over your shoulders as much as you can and you're gonna hold and you're gonna breathe. You can do some leg lifts if you want, but I always find this as a super good arm um, core strengthener. Maybe your hamstrings are tight and you can absolutely bend your knees if you feel a pulling in your lower back. Hold for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Everyone come down, whatever you've been doing. And let's all meet, instead of child's pose, let's meet in puppy pose. So bring your hips over your knees, reach your arms forward, lift your sit bones towards the sky. As we start to tone the practice down, reach the sit bones high, dial the hands out. Remember, if you're like, I still need some movement, rewind this class back, do the whole sequence again, and maybe add on, maybe add in some EPKs to your twists. Maybe add in some extra little reps, some extra little movements, some more demand on the core. And then slowly, mindfully walk the hands back and come to sit on your mat. So let's take a little side stretch. So you've worked a little bit the side body today. Stretch your right leg out, bring your left foot to the inside. Reach your left arm over, peel that left shoulder open as you reach the fingertips towards the right foot, but the aim is not to touch the foot. The aim is to keep that lovely opening. If you feel yourself really super closed, then instead let go of the foot and open. And hold three, two, and one. Inhale brings you up, left hand comes down, bring that right arm over, glutes on as you breathe the heart open. And then exhale, sit it down. Cross your right foot over your left, coming into Gomukhasana or cow face pose. This is too intense. You release the left foot underneath and you straighten it. Now, you can either, what leg are we on top? Right leg. Take hold of the right elbow or maybe the hands behind the back and fold here in the more classic pose. Or what I love to do is to bring my hands to the arches of my feet, pressing my thumbs into those arches and take a little mindful movement. So intuitive movement, maybe it's rocks from side to side, maybe it's circles, maybe it's even some little side stretches really opening out through that side body. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Ignore what I'm doing, ignore what anyone else is doing and do what's right for you. This voice, this voice within, the voice of us, that voice of truth, we sometimes like batter it down or cover it up. We do what our mind thinks we should be doing. We do what other people tell us to do. Listen to that voice, trust that voice, that inner voice of wisdom. Inhale, come all the way up, bring your hands behind you so you can unleash the legs and take a little windscreen wiper from side to side. Left leg comes out, right foot comes to the inner thigh. Breathe the side body open as you reach the right arm over, left foot is flexed. And again, it really doesn't matter what this pose looks like, it matters how it feels in your body. One more slow breath here. And come up, bend into your left knee, stack it on top of the right, just like you did before. Sitting inside the heels if you can, straightening the right leg if you need to. Now again, your left arm can come up now if you want it to, and you can take that classic Gomukhasana, or you can have a bit more freedom like me. Now, when we see yoga books, and we see these perfect asana, perfect postures, all bodies are different. There are gonna be certain poses that you can't do, that I can't do, just because our bodies don't work that way. So for example, I've got really, really long femurs, really long thigh muscles. So 
sometimes it just like poses just don't work. My, yeah, fire log pose is one of them. For me, I just don't understand. My knees are all the way off. So my point is tune in to how it feels, to what you need in your body. Holding here three, two, and one. Coming up, bringing the hands behind you, releasing, knees can go side to side. And then we're gonna find our way onto our backs for a twist before Shavasana. So slowly come down piece by piece, use your hands on your legs if you need to. Then hug your knees in, great big squeeze. Let go of your left leg. Bring the toes back towards you, so flex that foot. And then your right knee comes over, you can cactus the arm on the other side. And you can even straighten out that leg, just bringing the stretch a little bit more along the side seam of your leg. Don't force anything. Again, think, what do I need? What do I actually need? Last breath here. And then bend the knee. Take the leg back to centre. Switch it out. Left knee comes in, right leg stretches out. You're going to take the left knee over to the right side, maybe cactusing that left arm. And then maybe if you don't have a door like me, you can straighten that leg. One more breath. And then inhale, come up through center. Take any last pose you feel like you need before we find Shavasana. For me, I'm gonna hug my knees in and give myself a great big squeeze. And then when you're ready, find Shavasana. The final pose, the po pose where we fully absorb our practice. Lengthen the back of the neck by gently dropping the chin. Bring the arms a little bit further than you usually would. Let the fingers curl in naturally and take a great big breath in. And this time, sigh it out through the mouth. And as you let go, let go of all control on the breath now. Simply be its witness. As I always say, different parts of your body move as you breathe. Each breath looks different. And I want to end this class with a reading. And it was by Maya Angelou. If you don't know her, she's incredible. And I hope you love this as much as I do. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wild, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Now slowly, if you're ready to move mindfully with all the fingers and toes. Inhale, just like we did at the start, reach the arms away from you, reach the toes away from you, big, big stretch. And then exhale, hug the knees in, great big squeeze. Gently rolling onto your right side, take a moment. 
take a pause, take a breath. And then bringing yourself up to a seated position, eyes closed, let's bring our hands onto our belly, just above the navel, Manipura chakra. A chakra of willpower, of fire. Feel that fire that we have built during this practice today. And if anyone ever tries to push you down, you rise. Ending simply with one breath together. Inhale and let it go. Yogis, thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you on the mat, hopefully again tomorrow. Namaste.